nakakairitahan, dami natin babasahin na naman. Tapos mamaya may upload na naman daw ng ano, assessment si Sir. Ano, wala na tayong time mag-aral, kaya wala na tayong time mag-facial. Nakaka-stress. Ang daming kakabisa doon, hindi mo alam kung ano yung lalabas dito sa kus o hindi. Kapal ko po. Stress ka na dyan. Ang daming pa nating babasahin, meron pa sa medos, tapos ka na ba doon? Wait! Meron pa? Ano ko ilang pages? Ilan? 64 pages. Shucks! Magpapaprint ka pa. Ang dami mo na ng how. Eh kasi mas better kapag nakapaprint ka. Mas ayun yung mga highlight-highlight yung matatandaan mo. Ayan. What's up, family? I'm Kat. I'm Weng. And I'm Ikoy. And before we go to today's episode, family, let's have a short recap kung nga ba nangyari last time. Ating pag-uusapan ng advertising in the context of media. Kung baga, pag-uusapan natin dito yung mga public service announcement, pwede na rin yung creative processes in terms of advertising. <laughs> Pero kailangan siya magpapayat. Uh, wait, 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 Two. Pinapahirapan no. yung sarili nyo. The natural way easy kasi. No. We, may mas madaling way. Slim line from 100 to 10 pounds real quick. Okay, okay. teka, paano naman kayo nakasiguro sa quality niya? Paano kung nalaso na? Oo, run naman. Nakakapagod. Alam, alam, ayos, parang gusto ko na lang talaga niyang slim line na yan. O kayo kung ano-ano nalang pinagbibili niyo sa internet. Hindi naman lahat na nakikita mo sa internet, totoo. Branding would be ano, uh, a significant uh, factor in uh, producing our placement. Kung maalala nyo, last time, family, we talked about advertising. At para sa ating episode ngayong araw, very interesting ang ating pag-uusapan at tiyak na marami na naman tayong matututunan. Lalo pa at malapit ito sa atin bilang mga kabataan. Alam mo, tama ka dyan, Weng. Dahil for today's episode, we will talk about the new and traditional media. At syempre, meron pa rin tayong makakasamang expert para sagutin ang katanungan ng ating mga family. Sharing your expertise in the representation of media in the society today, makakasama ulit natin ng ating expert from episode 3 para ibahagi naman sa atin ang kanyang kalaman sa Trimedia platform. Once again, Miss Angie Quadra Balibay. Kaya hindi na namin kayo bibitin ng pa-family. Sit back, relax, and learn as you watch Am I Literate? Do the students follow a certain curriculum or learn from a subject that uses modern media tools for learning? If you're asking if there are subjects in the university, for example, even in high school, there are because CHED and DepEd has realized, at least in the Philippines, no, that uh, we need technology in the classroom, like for example in La Saldasma, more particularly in the CJD. We actually have an online multimedia journalism class that actually requires computers to be there, internet access to be there, gadgets of the students to actually be maximized. And all the classrooms now are equipped with smart television and therefore instruction can be visual, audio, and PowerPoint. And so um, all of these tools, teaching tools, are taken into account when any teacher puts together a lesson plan and therefore an outline or a syllabus. Uh, in terms of curriculum, it's a wider perspective for any department or college in a program. Um, I can say for a fact, for example, that the CJP has actually put in the curriculum things, in the new curriculum, things about that has to do with multimedia, uh, interactive learning, and, and new media even. When I was teaching in Benil, we had that. We had multimedia arts, we had art management that actually dealt with uh, multimedia tools and gadgets. So yes, more and more schools, especially the private schools, understand that we need multimedia. Now with um, um, non-private and, and state-sponsored, state-funded schools, I know for a fact that Lipa, uh, Lipa Element High School, there was one uh, Element High School in Lipa, is actually championing itself as a 21st century classroom. They even have tablets for every student in the classroom. They had the ergonomic and multimedia-friendly chairs 
unlike the regular chair, their chairs are cut up in their tables so they can actually form circles, form squares for interactive learning while they're using their tablets, while they're having the internet access. Mm -hmm. So that I think that's a great thing. The, the state-funded schools know that it's required and it's uh, needed and so they're making headway towards it. Um, many educators have understood it and are already using new media to prepare their lessons. Is there traditional media still considered one of men educational, educational tools? In my heart, I hope so. Because um, it's not true that print has died. When radio came on, people were thinking print is going to die. But it did not. And we still use it now. And the industry leaders now love print media because it's there, it's factual, it's substantial, and we need it. When Ray and TV came on uh, and during radio's heyday afterwards, uh, when TV came on in the 50s, in the Philippines, for example, um, people were started thinking radio is going to die because TV is here. It added visual to radio, but it still had not died. Radio continued to live and it's still with us right now. And... Uh, Audio material for creative sessions, for production sessions, are very much useful. After TV's heyday, the internet came in, and uh, therefore online instruction, online tools, gadgets, technology, people started thinking, TV then will die. But it has not, and it's still here. People still want to watch things on television and video. So I think my answer should be, all these mass media tools that we actually have encountered are still in full use by teachers right now because teachers themselves love print, they love reading, they love holding on to paper and then actually writing on paper. Uh, audio material that's actually exemplified by radio media, whether it's news, drama, music, is very useful for instruction. Television material like videos and, and whatnot are very useful and especially with, you know, as we talk about media conversions, all these three platforms get to go online and everything is present in the internet anyway. So it's good that the teachers will continue to use it. In the future, VR, hologram, the teacher's not there, <laughs> but you're actually learning. How to manage the equilibrium between new and traditional media, given that new media is do dominantly taking place? Um, in the Philippine experience especially, infrastructure for the internet is not as great. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not pervasive throughout the country. And even in the urban centers, you know, it's not so amazing. And so as long as the infrastructure for the internet is not as first world feeling, uh, as you know, like in Korea or Singapore, um, traditional media forms will continue to actually be needed and will continue to be more dominant, I think. Uh, for example, not in La Saldasma, although we're equipped with Wi Fi throughout the campus, but the classroom itself may not get the signal immediately. Um, for regular classroom, but for the CJD's classroom, like the online newsroom classroom where we are in right now, um, the internet is fast, the internet is needed, and we have gadgets to work with, but that's a rare case. So what I'm saying is because it's rare to actually have full pack infrastructure, internet power, Therefore, the use of print, radio, and television material will continue to be needed and therefore balance it out. But in the event that we do get to be like Korea with quick internet in Singapore, I really still imagine and I predict, no, love, no? I predict that the traditional mass media will still be very useful and will still be um, needed by instruction. How to balance it out? I think the, um, the, for example, one, the um, standards of print should be used by the internet multimedia tools. The standards of print, which is substantial news gathering, substantial fact checking, substantial discussion of an issue, that is way needed. 
in the internet and mass media tools. In the internet, we are so used to just scanning through it. One minute read, 20 seconds read, and we're done. But if we come out with material that's print-like in terms of facts and substance, and it gets uh, into a long-form article on the internet, and people actually read it, that's great. Audio or for a radio. Audio will always be useful because people, you know, for radio is a companion medium. Um, you're doing something and the music or the drama is running on or people are talking news and commentary. It's, it's fine and it will continue to be a companion medium and now it's even closer uh, because your radio is on your phone, your radio is on your laptop. So it will continue to be closer. Even if you're on the, in, on the internet, you listen to a podcast, you listen to a radio station using an app and you're there. Television material and video, the visual is on the internet. And therefore, whatever uh, television comes out with, whether it's film or actually news or drama or talk shows or teleserie or whatnot, will still be useful for instruction of uh, media literacy and, and media work because this is the reality that people are actually still accessing now. TV is still the way to go for most Filipinos, for example, because again, the infrastructure of the internet is not there. What is the significant difference of traditional and new media? The significant difference between the traditional and the online media or the new media right now is the online media is quicker. It gives you the information and it gives you access to it right now, real time. Television waits for the schedule of the program. Radio waits for the schedule of the program. Print, lalo na, waits for the schedule of the publication. And so the real-time need of people for what is the information right now? Where's the traffic? Where's the accident? What do we avoid? Um, what disaster actually happened where? Is my family okay? That's all on the internet. And um, that's the major difference. But again, for the traditional media, we have more time compared to the internet to actually search through facts and to find and to gather more information that will give us a fuller view of what happened. So insights, fuller view are on the traditional media and the internet is real time quick now. What is it? And then we backtrack to the traditional media, find out what really transpired, how it came to be, and you have the fuller story. What is the biggest threat of traditional media in digital media? I mentioned earlier that you know people predicted print, radio, television will die. The biggest threat I would be would uh, would be truth, because right now the issue about the online media is what's the truth. Online media has actually put forth many truths, quote unquote, and because they're there real time, they're quicker, they're faster, people they reach more people and people and people need information quickly they go to the internet they go to their social media and if that's not verified truth verified information as it usually is not because the internet media requires from the people who put it up put material there to go real time what's happening now put it up within seconds right now right now without benefit of a lot of fact checking and verifying with sources because it's required by the media and the medium whether you're on your social or on the company page or the website it's less checked than traditional media media so i'm saying um truth is the main victim and the main um main main thing that suffers when it comes to the internet media and that's why we need to balance both you still need the traditional media to back you up on what is being asserted online, counter check whether it's true information and you have a, a fuller, again, a fuller view of what's happening, correct context.
Eh ano ang gagawin ko? Eh di ba, magre-reklamo ka nga na ang daming gas? Eh paano pag si Jeep, kunyari, o di ba, magre-reklamo ka? Paano dadalhin mo ang takalang niya? May phone ka, di ba? Mobile. Ay, ay, ay bongga! I-download mo lang din yung PDF file. Paano siya yun ka? Paano mo sa akin? Ano? Oo, oo nga. Yung PDF. Kasi kung pa ako, wala na akong pabay. Pwede ko na rin yung highlight niya. Ayan, yung setting. Ay, bongga, te. Ay, ang ganda. Sige, itatry ko yan. Perfect. Oo. Ba't kayo kasi na? Hindi ka na. Ipit na tayo. Kasi siya, sa internet, posible na lahat. Pwede mo nang magawa kahit mas tipid ka pa. Kasi less pa pen, pero nakakapag-review ka. Nakaka-perfect tayo sa exam niya. Ako, page 64. Wow! Tapos na pala ako. Alam nyo guys, ang dami ko talaga natutunan from this episode. Ikaw ba, Mikoy? Alam mo, parehas lang tayo, Kate. But of course, I also enjoyed. Kung kami ay natuto na at nag-enjoy pa at the same time, sana ganda kayo family and we hope to see you again next episode. Kaya laging tandaan, it's lit to be literate. Again, I'm Kat. I'm Weng. And I'm Mikoy. And this is... Am I Literate?